Look at this beautiful day outside, barely a cloud in the sky. We got our moat full of leaves over here and we are in the year 2022 where we're gonna be doing some next level grilling. And you may look at the deck and you see some different stuff. Of course, we have our master belt smoker here rocking the Cosmo Q flag, but now we're flying with Team Red Kamado Joe. We got rid of the Primo, we got rid of the Traeger, and now we're flying Team Red. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use this Kamado grill as a very versatile grill. That's right, we're gonna be frying up some chicken fried steaks. Let's get started. Now this grill is brand new, you can tell, because it's still white inside and everything else, but we also are rocking our KJ big block lump right here, and we're gonna be bringing this grill up to 350 degrees. We're just doing a soft fry on these uh, cube steaks that we got going, but we gotta bring this grill up to temp, and of course, we're gonna be rocking our grill gun, as always, to speed up the process. One of the great things about Kamada Joe's, it comes with the divide and conquer system. Again, we're gonna be dirtying this up, but today we're not using our heat deflector plates. We're just gonna slowly bring this up to 350 degrees. I got a good fire started in there. Now, come on down here, let me show you. We're gonna open it up just about that much. And then we are going to shut this, open the top of the daisy wheel open, and then we're gonna bring it up to right about there. And that should set it at 350. While this comes up to temp, Let's step inside our chef's kitchen and take a look at our ingredients. The oil we'll be using today is peanut oil and we're gonna be using it in this old school cast iron pan because we're keeping it old school. This is something that my grandmother used to make, my mom made a couple times growing up and we're just gonna bring this, we're gonna pour it in like that. Go ahead and get that sexy. Now we're not going deep with this, we're not gonna fully saturate it. We're gonna do a light where it's just gonna cover the sides of it, a light fry, and it's just gonna cover the sides, then we're gonna flip it and bring it up to temp. So we're gonna take this cast iron plate outside, go ahead and place it on the grate and let it come up temperature with the grill. Now the next thing we are going to do is we're gonna do the dredge, which is we're gonna take our cube steak that we got at Publix and we're gonna mix it in a seasoned flour, which we're just gonna pour in like that, really simple. And we're gonna do an egg wash, season it with this, and then dip it back in. We've got to mix this together, so we're going to go ahead and uh, scramble up the eggs here. And yes, I'm doing it in cast iron, it's okay. So just mix this around, get a good mixture. Then we're gonna add some milk. We've got to mix together good, so let's pour in the milk. Don't ask me how much, just enough. be good right about there. Keep mixing it together and then it's about to get real messy. This is where your kitchen's gonna get really really dirty. We've got our cube steak. You can use top round, bottom round. This is already pre-tenderized and it comes up super easy. So you want to get it in there and make sure you pat it in. You want to get a lot of flour on there just like that. Flip it. Get it on top. It's probably better to use one hand on this because, like I said, it's going to get messy. Now, put it in the egg wash, like so. Beautiful. And we bring it back over and pat that down. And get it nice and covered. When you're doing this, we're gonna let this sit out for about five to 10 minutes 
on this rack right here so that we can let it absorb some of that flour in. I find that it gets a really good crust when we do it that way. And you think we're done, but we're not. We're gonna finish these two cube steaks right here. We're gonna get them in the double dredge and then we're gonna add some more flavor to kick it up a notch. Now there's not a huge mess in here. We are gonna be using some of this flour already, but this is what your hand looks like. It's better to probably use gloves. I don't have any. We're gonna go wash our hands. Then we're gonna step outside and check the temperature of the uh, grill and the oil. Now here's a secret your mama or your grandma didn't teach you. We're gonna kick up the notch with some Cosmo Q Sriracha Dirty Bird. It's gonna add just a little bit layer of heat to it, but it's gonna be amazing. And we're just gonna do both sides pretty generously. Man, that stuff smells so good. We'll do the back side as well. Now you could do this one of two ways. You could take some rub and throw it into the flour that you have with you mix with uh, salt, pepper, and all that kind of stuff. Or you can put it on after like I'm doing. Either way, it's gonna add a lot of flavor. This just gives it a little bit of heat to it, which I like things spicy. The person behind the camera does not love spicy things too much, but it's not a lot of spice, it's just more heat, which is good. Now we're about to start cooking our roux, but while you're waiting for your oil to come up temp, why not crack open a cold one? Pour it in your Cosmo Q. And we're actually gonna use some of this beer in our uh, gravy as well. That's good. The grill sitting at about 350, 375, which is right where we wanted it. Well, we wanted it a little bit lower at about 325, but we're opening it up. That'll bring it down. The oil was sitting at about 325. So we're gonna take our patty Shake off anything excess. Come in close for this shot. Right here. And you see we're not saturating it, we're just getting it where it's just over the side like that. We're gonna let it sit there for a few minutes till it's golden brown, then we're gonna flip it and do the same for the other three as well. I don't know, like, I've never cooked it on the grill before so I'm not sure. Now you always gotta make sure you click your tongs at least 35 times, but I wanna show you what's going on here. We see some of the juices coming out right around here. You can see. So it's probably ready to flip. So let's uh, wait there. Probably could've done a few more minutes on the other side, but we're gonna close that lid again. We don't want that temperature getting away from us and that oil burning. And then we're gonna do it again for the other two fillets as well. And then we're gonna bring it inside, let it warm in the oven while we make our amazing homemade country gravy with beer and Cosmo Q and every damn else thing that we got in the kitchen. Okay, so it's been in there a few minutes. We flipped it once. It's looking nice and golden brown. Now we don't wanna put it and cross contaminate with raw here. So look at that, let it drip. And then we're gonna set it right here while we cook the other two in the oil. And we're gonna get that going. Maybe we can fit both in there. Eh, maybe not, we'll see. Watch out for that oil, cause it's flung around. So we're going to cook those two and we're not cross contaminating. So we're putting it over here, letting it dry on the butcher paper. We're gonna throw it in the oven that's sitting at 200 degrees. Then we'll go and make our gravy and then we'll dive into these things. You wanna know how you did a good crispy skin on this? Listen to this right here. Nice and crispy. Perfect, just like me. Now while we're waiting for those um, other two steaks to cook, they're gonna take a little bit longer because we threw two in there at once, so it probably brought the oil temp down a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and make our roux. So we have some uh, Kerrygold unsalted butter here, and we're just gonna melt that down on this cast iron skillet here. To make the roux, we are gonna take five tablespoons of the pre-seasoned flour that we already had, and we're gonna mix that in with that butter that's melting over there. I think that's five, maybe six, doesn't matter. And we'll mix it in. 
like that. And we're just going until it gets to a nice consistent brown, which I know the butter was already hot, the cast iron pan was already hot. So we're just gonna mix it in until we get a nice consistency. Then we'll add some milk and a little bit of beer and a little more of the sriracha uh, dirty bird as well. Now with the roux, you want it to kind of look like wet sand, which is the consistency we have here. So now we are going to add our milk and we are going to whisk it in quickly while we pour it in, just like this. We want a nice creamy texture to this because we're also gonna be adding some pepper. You wanna mix that quick until it thickens up. We'll add some seasoning here in just a second. And of course we can't forget some of this amazing beer. Cheers. Mix that in. You can see it's already thickened up really well. Pour a little more in there. And give it a nice flavor. Take that, mix it in right there. You can see it's got some good pepper in there, some other good flavors. Mix that in. Look how thick that is, beautiful. Man, this is good. And then of course, now this is restaurant style pepper, but pepper's pepper. I know it's not fresh cracked pepper, but you'll get over it. You can use fresh cracked pepper, use whatever you got. If all you have is the pepper packets from Chick-fil-A, use those. I like a lot of pepper. Good flavor, and then we're gonna mix that in and reduce it. Look at that. It's this nice tan color. So we're gonna remove this from the heat, and then we're gonna head back outside and check on those steaks. We don't want this going to waste, let's head outside. The steaks here, the cube steaks have been going about maybe three or four minutes. That's about how long it took to make that gravy. So let's check on them. Oh yeah, beautiful. So we're just gonna flip it. Boom. And boom. Perfect. Just like me. We're gonna take this a few more minutes. We're gonna put them on here. And then we're gonna pour some beautiful gravy on it that we just made with that amazing beer. Cheers to you. Been going for a minute. Burp the grill. Beautiful. Close, sexy shots. The money shot is what they call it in some industries. So, We'll take this, look at that, perfect. Slide it right here. Take this one. Let it drip. Put it right there. Now we're going to shut down the KJ. She did her job. Let's take these beautiful cube steaks, country fried, chicken fried, whatever the hell you want to call it. We're going to take these in and we're going to slap some of that gravy on it and then we're going to taste it. We've got our homemade gravy here. Beautiful. Let's spoon it on top. I'm no chef. I mean, Pretty good cook, but that looks freaking amazing. Let me grab a fork and a knife. We're gonna try this out. Cook perfectly. 
That was a little bit of a thicker steak, but here we go. Mmm, 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 mmm. If your grandma made this, you'd slap her it so good. I ain't mad about that. Mmm. Look at that. Just cooked perfectly all the way through. The purpose of chicken fried, country fried steak is to take a cheaper cut of meat or something more lean and give it some flavor. This has some awesome flavor. So now we're going to turn it around. Come on over here. She's behind the bar, but this lovely lady right here, say hey. Hi. She's gonna try it out. She doesn't eat gravy, but she's gonna try this gravy. No, I'm not. Yeah, we are. No, try a piece without the gravy. Well, good luck, cause it's uh, smothered in gravy here. Yeah, whatever. I'm telling you, man. Trade her in for a new model. Here we go. She got it. Actually, a decent size. Surprised about that. Usually, it's a lot less. Go ahead. Now, I grew up, my parents, well, my mom made country fried steak, but she made it with pork. So I am curious to see how this is different than the pork that I grew up eating. Your mom cooked? She did. It's on a rotation, but she did cook. Mm, okay. So, okay. Dive in. What do you think? It's good. I'm gonna ask you again. <laughs> what do you think? It's good. It's great. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, my piece wasn't very crunchy, so probably because that was, the, I, don't, I don't know. It wasn't very crunchy. Very crispy. I mean, it is crispy. I don't taste the heat, so that's good. It's not spicy. Weak. <laughs> hey, but I ate two bites. Overall, what do you think? It was very good. Would you eat this as a meal? Yeah, I'd eat this as a meal. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Pretty simple. She didn't, uh, dive into the gravy there, but I'm telling you, man, this homemade gravy is fire. It is so delicious. Here's to you. Here's to 2022. Make sure you eat well, you do well. We'll see you next time. Mmm, freaking good.